One of the more confusing terms in cooking is the word stock. Classically, a stock is made primarily with bones and is unseasoned. The purpose is to add body from the gelatin of the stock. This is why you can use veal stock in fish dishes because veal stock is exceptionally neutral. A broth, on the other hand, is strongly flavored with the meat of the animal and also seasoned with salt and spices. A broth is suitable for serving as a flavorful soup all by itself. A stock would make a miserable soup by itself. The complication is that both broth and stock are used in making sauces and other cooking applications. Okay, I have a lamb here. I have about a kilogram in all, about two and a quarter pounds. Uh, part of it is lamb leg, and part of it is lamb ribs that, that don't have very much meat on them. Now we need to grind the spices up. I have uh, one of these sweet chilies that I dried myself, as I explained in the cookbooks. Uh, I'm going to crumble this in. I'm going to not use the stem. And, and you don't have to make it too precise, because it's all going to get ground up in the spice mill anyway. I'm going to add to this a couple of teaspoons of black peppercorns, about two tablespoons of brown sugar, and about one teaspoon of coarse salt. There's going to be more salt later, so you don't need to worry about that. The coarse salt right now is mostly for the, um, for the sake of the abrasive properties of the salt itself. I transferred the lamb to a baking dish here. I'm going to put you know, about three or four tablespoons of olive oil on this. I'm not counting it exactly. So I'll just around a little bit. Then I'm going to sprinkle all of this spice mix. It's a lot of spice mix I have over this and, and try to try to make it fairly even here. This is what you want to end up with. The spices are, are primarily coating the meat. Eh, there's a few crumbs here on the edge, but that's that's not a big issue. Okay, and it's mostly a single layer here in the dish, like this, and this is going to go in the oven to roast. And here's what we have after about an hour. And now we're ready for the next stage. We have the uh, uh, an onion that I just peeled and sliced in half. I've got a head of garlic that I cut in half. I'm going to use, um, <laughs> because of the region that I live in, we get, in the fall, we get tons of wild mushrooms that are just there for the picking, porcini and the like, and sometimes I just kind of cut cook them down to a mush and save them like this for use as mushroom stock and things. You can, and, and if you're going to do use this approach, then you're going to need to add about a teaspoon of salt. Otherwise, you can use one of these cubes. The mushroom cube from Maggie, or well, there's a few other brands. This is, the mushroom one from Maggie is actually pretty good, uh, but obviously not as good as fresh wild mushrooms that, uh, that you, you cooked yourself. But, you know, you gotta, you got to use what you have. So on the bottom of the pressure cooker, I put the, the onions and the garlic. Now I'm going to put the lamb that was roasted. And yes, all of the juices came off the roasting pan. No reason to throw those away. They're part of the flavor. We're going to sip it off later anyway. Now because I'm using these, these mushrooms that, uh, that uh, I forged myself, I'm going to add salt and you know how much mushroom you add one of those maggie cubes adds about maybe three tablespoons of, of wild mushrooms yeah you can use your own judgment now we add the water to this yeah just like in the song i'm adding parsley sage rosemary and thyme I'm actually a little bit short on fresh thyme right now, so what I'm going to do, and you can do this too, you can, you can substitute dried herbs. Uh, they're not as good, of course. I'm going to add about a teaspoon more of thyme because I only had a, a few little sprigs. I couldn't get any more <laughs> right now. So this would be fine, though. Now we're going to seal this up and begin the pressure cooking. Here we have it. It's 
completely cooled down again. Now I'll have to uh, pick the, these herbs out of there and, and get the meat off to the side, then pass this through a sieve. I've picked the large pieces of meat off of here, and these will get um, saved for later. This is uh, already quite delicious, by the way. And now I've got a sieve set up here. We're going to pass liquid through this. Push down on it some, try to get as much through as we can. And this is the broth. I just transferred it uh, to a storage container. It's got uh, a layer of fat that's risen to the top. Uh, I'm just going to let this cool down, and uh, by tomorrow morning, this will be ready to, to skim the fat off of. And the next morning, or even you can leave it in there for you know, a couple of days if you want to. We've got this very hard cake and fat that's solidified on top. Now what you do with this fat is up to you. Uh, most people would just throw it out. Some people like cooking with animal fat, and certainly there's a lot of flavor in there. What we have beneath it is what we really want here, which is very, very rich, very, very flavorful lamb broth. Now it's not gelatinous because there was hardly any bone in it, it's almost all meat. This is an incredibly uh, fragrant, uh, beautiful lamb stock, good for soups, uh, sauces, and other things, um, which uh, I'll show you some of in the future, especially the next video coming up. you also find sediment is accumulated at the bottom of this. See, so pass through a china sieve, you can see this is, this is what you get. You get this gritty stuff that's at the bottom, but you have to use a very, very fine sieve to get all this. That's uh, it's what it's a chinois or china cap. The second volume of my cookbook is now available through Amazon and other booksellers. It covers the YouTube recipes from the last eight months with more in-depth information. I received requests for the procedures on all recipes and I've listened to you. Every recipe has step-by-step -step directions and of course there are recipes that aren't on YouTube. But this is not just a recipe book. Far from it as you can see from some of the topics scrolling by here. I'm certain that anyone who watches my channel and any serious cook will find this book a treasury of useful and new information you won't find anywhere else. If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.